Hey everyone, uh, this is a Cinema 4D tutorial to cover our 3D sculpted uh, head project that we're going to be doing um, and uh, kind of go over the basics of sculpting and then also talk about uh, getting it prepared to 3D print. So when we start this project, what I'd like everyone to do is to begin by um, going to preferences and changing your units uh, to millimeters. When we 3D print, we're going to be working in millimeters, so it's best to set up your project accordingly. Um, and then what we're going to do is uh, work with the content browser to get a you know, generic sort of head and go through the sculpting tools and uh, lay that out. So to begin, go to the content browser. Uh, if you're on presets, you can navigate to 3D objects, probably volume two. Go to sculpting, and I'm just going to grab in this generic head. So just double click that, it'll pop in. And before we go too much further, I'm gonna scale this a little bit. Um, so in order to do that, we're just going to uh, pop over to, um, I'm just gonna pop over to Google actually and, and do this conversion, so millimeters to inches. So let's say we want our bus to be about three inches tall, uh, maybe three and a half inches tall. So let's say, 89 millimeters all right so let's go back to cinema let's just scale this thing accordingly and then we can work from there so right now it's about 300 so i'm just going to grab my scale tool actually i'm going to hide my floating controls so i can see what i'm doing on zoom first there we go all right i'm just going to go to my scale tool and i'm just going to scale this down until the height uh, which is y is about 89 or something close to it 90, why not? Okay, so there we are. This is gonna be roughly about um, three and a half inches tall, which is good for us to work. All right, now, now that we're set with that, we can go into our sculpting menu. So in order to do that, head up to this top right menu, pop on layouts and go down to sculpt. Now, in order to sculpt this, we need to add uh, more polys. So if we look at this in display mode with lines, you can see that there are very few polys. So what we're going to do is hit this subdivide tool, hit it once, twice, go to about level three, I would suggest. All right, so see, we are at level three, it's about 15 megs. You can see there's a real fine mesh here. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. Uh, so then um, I would suggest just turning this back to shading and we can start sculpting. So uh, what I like to do when I begin is actually just start to use the grab tool. And what I'm going to do with this is set up my symmetry. So I'm going to click on grab. I'm going to go down to the attributes manager, hit symmetry, and choose the X. And that will be on the left and the right side simultaneously, which is going to be helpful. And then what I'm going to also do is click on link symmetry and begin to sculpt. So when I start with the grab tool, I'm going to go to settings here and ramp this up to a big number like 180. All right. And uh, then I can kind of shape this so I can, you know, think about maybe widening the face, dropping it up or down. You see, you can really play with it overall. Uh, go around the entire view and kind of think about how you might want the, this to look, you know, depending upon how you start to stretch and shape and work with it in that sort of form. After you do the overall shaping, then I suggest sort of going down. So maybe ramp this down to 90, and then you can do more refined things like suck in the cheeks perhaps a little bit, or maybe you can, you know, work on the forehead a little bit to have it be more defined. Um, the back of the neck, you know, the lump in the head, any of these sort of things that you can kind of like do smaller refinements. So go through the whole thing um, and start to reduce the size, put on to 60, then I can get even closer. You don't want to do too small of a tool right away because then you'll end up with a lot of funny like bumps and marks and stuff. Bring the cheekbones out a little bit, sink the eye sockets up. Okay, so here again, you can really begin to shape and, and work uh, subtly as you go. And then finally, you know, maybe I want to bring it down to something like 30 and again, even do more refinement kind of as I go. Now from here, what I would suggest is uh, starting to think about um, some of the features. So the next step that I tend to do is, is use the knife tool and the smooth tool. 
So the knife tool is going to allow you to make like a cut in the surface, right? It undo. Um, so for example, the mouth, I needed to find more, probably the nose, I wanted to find more, maybe um, the eyes, I definitely want to define more. And so what I'll do with this is bring the size down maybe to like 10. And let's just zoom into the mouth and see if we can get something pretty close. You may need to subdivide to get a little bit better feature. Um, but I'm just going to start here and kind of work my way out and down like that to give a little bit more definition. It's obviously too strong. So I can go to my grab tool and I can start to shape it a little bit as I go. I can also use the smooth tool. And in this case, I'm going to bring the pressure down maybe to like 20 something and the size down a little bit more as well and start to smooth some of these areas so it's a little bit less defined. Okay, and then again, back to the grab and kind of shape it back and forth. So again, what, what you're seeing here is me just kind of like playing with the form, trying to get a little bit more defin definition and, and depth. And remember when you're 3D printing, we're gonna wanna have a little bit of contrast to make these things pop out. All right, so I'm gonna go into this a little bit and then explain more what I've done. Okay, folks, I've gone a little further on this. You can see that I've used the knife tool to add some lines in the face, make this pouty sort of shape in the mouth, define the eyes a little bit. I've also used this inflate tool uh, and I've clicked invert and made it a very small. And then I've gone in here to make this an indentation uh, because in the 3D print, you know, you're not gonna see, you have to define every bit of the form. So that'll be important. I also use the knife tool on the ear and also I use the pull tool and inverted that as well so that I could push in. You see that you can invert a tool like pull and it will push in instead of pull out. So what I'm gonna do with this now is make some sweeping drastic changes to make this more unique. I'm actually gonna take the grab tool and I'm gonna ramp it up really big like 180 and I'm gonna turn off symmetry and I'm gonna really kind of contort this figure, really kind of stretch it and morph it and make it uh, a bit obscure in different ways uh, for my 3D print. So once I do that, then I'll show you how to set it up for um, the final print. And, uh, and then we'll talk about exporting it out as an STL. So be creative, think about doing something unique, play around with textures, forms, make it absurd, make it hilarious, make it sinister make it evil, anything you want to do to make a really unique head uh, for this 3D print. All right, I've got this really crazy looking head. I'm just going to um, add a little pedestal to it because it's all wavy on the bottom. It'll be difficult to 3D print this. So in order to do that, I'm just going to um, hide my floating controls again. Hold on, here we go. Uh, I'm just going to pop in a cylinder Let's go back to our standard menu here. Sorry, standard menu. And the cylinder's got to be pretty small. So let's just make this radius 40 and the height of like 40. And let's do segments to be 96. So it's nice and smooth. We're going to bring this up. And let's take a look here. It's not bad. way this way that seems all right maybe just a little bit wider all right so now this has a built-in base all right that will easily be able to work so in this case what we'll need to do now is get this ready to print so we're going to take this uh, Remember that if you get rid of this tag, then it, it no longer has its, its features. So we're gonna convert this into a polygon form. So click on your head, go to mesh, conversion, current state to object, All right? Here we are. Okay, and then we're gonna take the cylinder here. So, so we've got these two, and I'm just click on both of those and go to mesh, conversion, connect objects and delete. All right, so now I've got wave head ready to go. And I'm just gonna hide all this stuff. And go to file, export, STL. 
millimeters. Okay. Appropriate location. Save. And then next video, we'll talk about getting it ready to print.